Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. Today in Dave's Garage, I had to compile the Linux kernel. So I thought, why don't I make a video, or at least a short one, showing you how to do the Linux kernel as I compile the Linux kernel, and then I'm going to boot it and run it. So we're not just going to build the kernel for fun, we're actually going to deploy and then run that kernel to see that it actually works, and we'll be running our own kernel. How serious am I about this? I'm still wearing my gym clothes, and I didn't comb my hair, so don't hate me on the production values, but let's get right into it. So the first thing we need to do if we're going to build a Linux kernel is to install some tools like the compilers and so on that we will need. So we'll do a sudo apt update. Oh, I'm on brew. All right, this is where I want to do it. We'll let it run and do all of its updates. Okay, now we want to install the build essential tools and I'll paste that command line in. This is from the video description, so I'll make sure you get that information. And we'll run this. This will install all the packages, but they're already installed on my machine, so it was a quick trip. Now we'll go into my source folder. Don't have one yet, so we can make their repos. And we'll now clone the Linux code. Now here's the command line to do that. We're only going to do it to a depth of one because we don't need the entire Linux history, and that will make getting the code that much faster. Now we want to copy the existing configuration of the kernel that's installed on this machine and we're going to use uname as a command in order to get that information. We're going to use that as part of a larger command which will then copy the configuration file to a new file for us. There we go. We can see that we're running config 6.8.10.21 Azure. Interesting. Now we want to make a new config but what I'm going to do is to pipe yes into make old config which will just answer all the questions with yes. And with that, we should be prepared to go. So let's do a make clean, just to make sure things are clean and working. Okay, and I'm going to do a make. Actually, I'm going to time it. No, I'm not going to time it yet, because we'll, we'll do the timing on the first pass. We'll do make that J192. And that should be it. And it's off on the races. Well, let's watch it go. I'm going to do it in real time here, because this is actually fast, and I don't need to speed it up. This is 192 cores of a Threadripper 7995WX with 480 gigabytes of RAM available to the VM that it's running in, so it is about 2% slower than if it was running on the native hardware, is my estimation. And it looks to be wrapping up. This is a full build with all the drivers and everything, so... Looks like I forgot to build the modules, so let's do that before we attempt to install them. So I'm thinking this is because we're trying to sign it and we don't have the original certificates needed. So we're going to go into our config and turn off the signing features so that we don't require those certificates. And we'll try one more time. So long story short, it turns out that to replace the kernel with one that I build, I would need to be able to sign it, and I am not Ubuntu or any official organization, so I don't have signing keys, so I'm not sure how to sign the build. So what we're going to do is just build it without signatures by building the default configuration. To do that, we'll make clean. Then we will make def config. And we'll time our build with a time to make dash J with 192 cores. And it should take somewhere right around 20 to 22 seconds on this system. We'll see what it says at the end. 21 seconds. So 21 seconds to build a Linux kernel. So the next thing I'm going to do is to download an Ubuntu ISO. Oh, not found. Let's see what I can find. Okay, here's the one we want. It'll take a few minutes, so I will let it run and we'll just speed that little section up. Okay, now we're going to try to use QEMU to boot and run the kernel we just built in combination with the ISO that we downloaded of Ubuntu. So we'll use that distribution, but it will use our custom kernel. Could not open. Hmm. Kernel panic. Unable to mount the root file system. Well, maybe I didn't make a file system for it yet, because I didn't make a disk image for it. But at least we saw that the kernel booted, which is kind of the important thing, and let me take one more shot at it. So it turns out we need a NetRAM FS. So here is what you need to do in order to create one, and it's kind of gobbledygook, but I will also put the gobbledygook in the video description so that you can follow it and use it if you need to. Let's have a look. 
So we're going to make a directory and then we're going to go into it. We're going to copy some files around. We're going to link a file and then we're going to do some pretty magical fine stuff going through CPIO, which pipes through gzip, which is going to make a compressed init RAM FS image for us. File exists. That's because I already did it behind the scenes before I tried it here with you. So we've got that file. Next, we want to try and run it. And I'll do it with sudo qemu. There we go. Booted rather quickly, didn't it? And here we are. We're in a Linux system that we built ourselves. Well, the kernel, anyway. And so we've booted and are running a Linux system that we compiled the kernel for entirely on our own. Thanks for joining me out here in the shop today. Make sure you check out Shop Talk on the Dave's Attic channel for a lot more interesting content. That's where we do our weekly podcast where we answer questions from viewers about these kinds of episodes so you often get a lot of interesting answers but you have to go and find Dave Zadek in order to do so so take a moment to do so thanks and I'll see you next time